Don't you love the sound of that? You just think about something pouring into your life. <laughs> Ooh. Think about that thing that you created when we did the pure technique last Sunday night. Think about what that was, and then think about it raining that into your life. Like, wow. Ah, oh, love that. Great symbolism, isn't it? And that's uh, that's what we're going to continue to talk about tonight because it seems like that's where the vibe is and where the energy is flowing. And you know, I just realized that I did not turn my Wi-Fi off. Let me see what you guys are seeing here real quick, just to make sure that, uh, um, well, Facebook, hello. Hello, Facebook. <laughs> Hold on, guys, just a second. Technical, there we are. Okay, yeah, we're good. I just didn't want that... Um, bad image that sometimes happens when we don't have the right Wi-Fi set up. Good. All right. We're good to go here. Oh, wow. Where else was it raining? Oh, down in Florida today. Hey, Kathleen, great having you. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all did good. Thank you. Um, we are going to continue talking about what we talked about last time because it's working. Oh, sorry. I am. Oh, hold on. Just kick a little more light on here. Stand by. That's better. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Got the wrong glasses on. I'm just a mess. Good. All right. That'll make it. That'll make it better. That will make it better. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Kristen. All right. I have a card for us that is so incredibly perfect. It is just so level up and so the theme that we are on. Yeah, it's the, just me here tonight. <laughs> just me raw. Oh, so I drew this and I, I, I wasn't familiar with this card in this deck. Number, finger out of the way, number 12, the hanged man. And I thought, am I going to be able to read this? <laughs> I'm going through this section in Fred's current book that I'm, I had to stop. So I, I'm very sensitive to that right now. And this is the hangman. Listen to this. Are you ready? I mean, fasten your little Sunday night seat belts. The light seer surrendering to the will of the cosmos, an intentional pause, reflection, letting go. Embracing the new, realigning your heart with purpose, new wisdom found, spiritual teachings, sacrifice, enlightenment. Wow. What's the shadow side? Equally significant. Stagnation, self-sabotage, holding on to something that isn't meant for you, stubbornness, a tendency to be a martyr. Here's what it says. This is so good. Flow with it. Well, you could stop right there, couldn't you? Flow with it. Divine wisdom spills forth in moments of deep flow. The hanged man is offering you the chance to look at something from a completely different perspective. <laughs> it's for sure. 
when you let go of that thing that's got you stuck, you will make space for new insights and vantages to shift into place. Open your heart to the bigger plan, and you will inadvertently tap into a whole new framework from which to see the world. Know that your path and your dream may look unfamiliar to you after you relinquish the need to direct the outcomes. Who may I read that again? Know that your path and your dreams may look unfamiliar to you after you relinquish the need to direct the outcomes. Surrender to the will of the cosmos and realign your life with its sacred patterns. The universe already knows which life-altering lesson is the key to your happiness, and your higher self has so much wisdom for you when you intentionally pause to listen. The little one-sentence capture, I lean into my inner world of limitless miracles, the divine will of the cosmos, surrendering to the divine will of the cosmos. The Hanged Man, number 12 in the deck, if you have it. That's from, the, of course, the one that we always use, the Lightseer's deck. <sighs> wow, how do you follow that? Have a nice week, everybody. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wasn't that great? Oh, and here I was thinking, um, you know, what's what's up with this? I am really, I am so, hey, we've got a birthday girl in the house. She and uh, let's see, one of other of our members who doesn't pop in too often, but uh, somebody that's been with us for several years, birthday today, and Robert Glasscock's birthday was today, so, or is today. So there you go. Good company for those of you um, celebrating today. So, um, It has been a consistent message, and it's a growing message, and that's the wave that we're going to ride tonight is that message, because it is. I mean, doesn't that just ooze pure authenticity? Letting go and joining the flow, because the cosmos knows what's best. And we have to say that intuition synchronicities, wisdom, uh, will carry us through when we do let go of the rope and we tune in. And um, I had put up, let me just see if I can, I'm going to go out of order here a little bit, because I had put this in here, and I don't, you know, as you guys know, I don't do this much, because a lot of you don't know or understand astrology and it's like what am i looking at and we don't want to take time to explain so what i put in the upper left is the issue du jour here cy goglin <laughs> cy goglin is a north carolina appellation term that means well there's a video online that speaks to how to talk appellation properly you have to be from here in order to do it, because if you're not from here, they'll just spot you as a phony right off the bat. But it has a definite ling lingo all into itself. And you kind of have to talk like this. And you've heard it before, but it's real. I mean, this is how people here often talk. You will hear them all the time. And a cygoglin is, well, a cygoglin is when you're building a, a building and you, you lay down a a line of boards, and they end up when you back up and you look at it after you nailed them all together, they're crooked. Well, that's a cygoglin. <laughs> or other types of disjointed efforts. <laughs> and what this is in the sky over our heads is a cygoglin. <laughs> and we talk about it tomorrow on Fun Astrology, and we'll leave that there. But I just wanted to show you what two yods and um, a kite and a grand trine and a bunch of squares looks like, because this is truly a cygoglin of energy. And in fact, it took so, it took two days to explain all of this. So 
What we're seeing, and this was the point that I made around this on the podcast tomorrow, is you know that saying that we follow, as above, so below. And that's why that is so beautiful. And by the way, I want to stop right here, right now, put the brakes on this, and let's all just for a second take a pause. Let's center in, center up. But something I've been doing with everything that I do, and I did it before I pulled the card, is I'm protecting the space. And I'm just doing that for myself. So let's just for a second, in your own way, first of all, release and command in the name of the Most High any malefic or non-loving presence that may be among us in our own individual spaces or in our collective space must now flee. You are not allowed. You are not welcome. And in the name of the Most High, with the archangels chasing you out of this space, you must go now and not come back. You must leave if you are with one of the individuals who is in this meeting live or watching it later. You must go, leave their presence, and don't come back in the name of the Most High. And this space may only be filled with love and purity, with highest intentions and highest timelines for the rest of our time together, the rest of the night, and into our week ahead. And so it is. And in the name of the Most High, may it be done. And then let's just envision a big white you know, that protective white light, because we're calling in the best. We're calling in the angels. We're calling in purity, not just white fog. We're calling in white purity. We're calling in divine purity. A lot of people think of pink, rose, the color of love. Think of that surrounding us now. And the reason I'm doing that in everything that I'm doing, especially if it's a card or a chart or a reading or anything, is because I have seen, and I saw it again this weekend, well, into last week and into this weekend, the critters just seem to be on extra duty right now. And I, I have been sensitive to this since the summer when that I went to that event in uh, town and just saw it was like the dichotomy of the use of spiritual tools for malefic evil has been with us for since we have been here. And so it's nothing new, but it seems to be amplified. So this is where I'm looking at my own practice, looking at my own life, and just the, doing the one thing that we can do is to clear the space and stand in purity. But I'm also very aware that all of these things that we do can tip just that far. And we might think we're on the right path. So I think it's something that heightened awareness and heightened alertness and taking a proactive stance and for goodness sake, standing in what the power that we have. We have the power to do this. So we use it, stand in it. And that's what I'm doing. And I think that's what all we can do. I mean, really, is to just claim it and then stand in the fact that what we just said worked and they're gone. And keep doing that. Keep your own space pure. Now, um, sorry, I was in the middle of something and I forget what it was, but that was more important <laughs> than what it was. But the, oh, this of, above, above and below. You know, so we say as above, so below. And that's why I love looking at the sky because it is this fractal reflection of what's going on here. But then I thought, well, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe sometimes what's going on here is reflected there. So it is kind of a psychogon right now. It's a challenge. And what's up there right now is, reflected as such. And I know those points have been there for thousands of years to be there today, but um, I don't know. These are just interesting times. And I sometimes it's like, which, which one has got the flip? You know, it's like, are we reflecting from that way or that way? So, um, okay. So 
All right. So let me move on to a couple of things. In light of that, in light of the clearing of, um, boy, I didn't get this typed in either. Um, in light of clearing our space, there's something that I've been working on that I just thought I would show you. We've talked about it on here. In fact, we did a whole session on it a couple of months back, and several of you commented on how meaningful that was, and Sarah really locked on to it, and I see Sarah's in here tonight. <laughs> Good time to come in, right? <laughs> and we have... Um, some things that Sarah has put together for us this week. She is putting these um, various things together. And if you look in the upper left, that is a coyote howling in a um, uh, southwestern Santa Fe kind of style theme. And then if you look at the kind of purple one in the upper right, and you see something coming out of the coyote's mouth, that is indeed, ow! So you can get that in the short sleeve and long sleeve, the highest timeline, fun astrology podcast. I'm ordering all of these. I'm getting all of this stuff uh, ordered this week. It's on sale in the shop. And the URL, I should have put it in here. Sorry, it, but I'll give it to you here is spiritual designs 11 at etsy.com. Spiritual designs, plural, 11 at etsy.com. And that will be announced on the podcast tomorrow too. And it's in the Facebook group too. So thank you for that. But here is something that I've been doing and it's clearing my lineage. So I found a graph. The first one I did, I left it over there. But the first, the first version of this I did, I did it this way and I did it from the bottom up. And you're dealing with, what is it? It's 204. 256, 256 couples, I believe, up here on level seven. So I went down seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then I made myself like level zero. And a lot of these genealogy charts online make you level number one, your parents number two. But I found this one. And if you just search seven generations lineage chart like that, you'll get it. And there are several that popped up, but this one was pretty clean. And I know names back to my great grandparents, and I don't know all of them, but I know some of them. And then beyond that, I'm just, I'm not worried about the names. I'm just going through and in every one of these, and then I'm going to get over to here, and then I'm going to get over to here and just taking time, but to realize that every one of those lines, especially when you get over here. I mean, that's a couple, you know, it's very, very small. But all of those people contributed to who I am and who you are. And, and there's a lot of energy represented in that chart over a lot of years. I traced it back. And I think that I don't have it on here. I have it on my other sheet. But I think that it traced back for me to like, the 1600s ish kind of back that far maybe to go back but it i mean it covers a long time span and a whole lot of people and what i'm doing is i'm just touching my pen to it i don't need to know their names um and then let me call up uh, oh, hold on guys I told you this is raw and real tonight and what I'm doing is this. I kind of adapted that um, cord cutting mantra or cord cutting affirmation that I had specifically to lineage. So I'm touching my pen beyond the names that I know. Now, some of these I know and I know some of the stories. So I'm spending a little more time there. But once I get past great grandparents, now we're down to here that or here, but I'm just, you know, like like this person, this person, this person, this person. Mm -hmm all a lifetime of energy, all an astrology chart, all an eternal soul passing through that time and space, good times, bad times, generally a good life, generally not a good life, whatever it is. My grandmother's mother was murdered washing dishes at her kitchen sink. Bullet came through the sink. 
My grandmother was like three. There's murder right there in that line of the lineage. And one thing I felt, I drew this line because this was mom's side and this was dad's side. And as I was doing this, I felt a heaviness in my mom's side. Oh, I mean, by just putting their names in there. And then I had already done the boxes. And by doing all of this by hand, you really connect into the energy that's on that page. But I just, as even as I did this and I started working through it, the bottom side of the page was oh, kind of heavy. And then up here uh, was much lighter. So I, I think it's just an incredibly valuable exercise. And this is what I'm doing. And this is, you can adapt any of, you know, this is just something that is an expression. Come up with your own words. But it's that I now sever all cords to your energy that remains in my energetic space and field. Remember, I've got a pen just holding on that person. Thank you for your biological contribution to my life. Thank you for your life, however it was lived. I now release any remaining residual family lineage energy that remains from your life here on earth. As I cut these ties to your life, I honor my space, and I honor the space you had during your lifetime. We are now each free in our own light. I am free. You are free. Only that which is beneficial and empowering remains. Can you feel the power of that even right now? That is huge. And you don't have to do it in one night, or you can do it in one night. It's a lot of dots, and it's a lot of reciting that cutting. But I'll tell you, it is incredibly freeing. So um, that's something that you might think of doing. Why? Because what I'm seeing right now, and this has been building, but I'm seeing it increasing. And I'm look, this is my observation, and I may not be right, but what I think I'm seeing is that the separation, or at least the call to be an A-team player versus a B-team player, or not even suiting up, is separating, and it's getting even more uh, divergent. I've chosen that I want to be an A-team player. A lot of you have chosen to be an A-team player. My goodness, you wouldn't be sitting in here with doing this tonight because we've decided for over two years now, we've joined hands figuratively and are committed to joining our energy together to send it to each other and then send it up to the world. And that's what we've been doing. And that's the gist of this. And then we just get on here and talk for a little while and throw up our little comments and things like this so that we connect with each other. And it's been beautiful. It's been amazing. And there really truly have been subgroups created from this of people that have reached out to each other and met sometimes in person. And it's just been beautiful what's been spawned from this. But the ultimate goal is to just say that we are a support for each other to be an A-team player. We have somebody who gets up at two o'clock in the morning where he lives, Arnaldo, and has for, well, since uh, Fred's seminar last year. And buddy, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that and how much that means to me for you to do that. But he gets up at two o'clock in the morning to be here with us. So for those of you who it's a little bit of a stretch to make it because it's dinner time in California, well... <laughs> at least you're not. It's, look at what Arnaldo's doing, and he's been doing it for a long time. So I thank you for that. And, um, and yeah, we love you, man. I'll tell you that um, that just touches my heart so much that you've done that. Oh, 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 just incredible. So what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing is, What I'm seeing is what we did the protection for. 
that it looks like we're trying to be on a good game, but we've got portals. And the critters are coming through those portals. And they're attacking. And they are more vicious. That's what I'm seeing. And I know, look, you can't blame everything on, you know, some entity. But I'm seeing things that are just amplified. And that's where I know that everybody here wants to really play the A game level. So this is, I thought I would just share what was this morning's, my time, my personal time this morning and what came of it. So the first thing I thought and I wrote down was that I wanted to just check my motives. What are my motivations? This was me getting very, very real in the quietness of the early morning here of what am I doing and why, really? And I wanted to make sure that I was being motivated and faithful for the right reasons. And I wanted to purge any subtle motivation to do it for my ultimate gain, anything of what I'm doing. So I thought, what would proper motives look like? If I were to define that, what does proper motives look like in this context of doing this kind of work? Doing soul work instead of living the mundane, which is great. I mean, that's great. I um, came across a video. You know, if your YouTube channel is anything like mine, you have Jimmy Buffett videos on there all the time uh, since he passed away. And one of them was a compilation of 60 minute interviews that Steve Croft had done with Jimmy Buffett over the years, different ages, different venues, different shirts, different clothes, all kinds. Of, it was really cool. But he talked about the, the morph of his career and of course the song that made his career. And one of the quotes that Jimmy Buffett said just will stick with me like glue. He said, you know, I was able to put my finger on the pulse of escapism and we market it pretty well. Jimmy Buffett died with a net worth of over a billion dollars. And that's how big escapism is in our culture. And he was right. He did it better than anybody. He put the finger on the pulse of it and marketed the heck out of it. And I thought, wow, what would it be like to have something like that for spirituality, for highest timeline spirituality? wonder how much that would garner up, the pulse of it. Is there even a pulse of it? Yes, I think there is a pulse of it. It's not the Margaritaville pulse, but there is a pulse, and it's a growing pulse. And that's what we're about doing here is magnify. It's like when I check my heart rate, I, you know, I find my carotids. It's like, oh, yes. And that is getting louder and stronger. And the drumbeat of it is the cadence of it is a rhythm that is going to be growing over the years ahead. I firmly believe and oh, I pray that it will. And that's why we're here. So what would proper motivations look like? Well, the first thing I thought of was that it is for my highest timeline regardless of what shows up here on earth. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Pure soul motivation, not pure throw on the blender and check out motivation. That it's not for money, that it's not for notoriety, that it's not in order to get something, some hidden agenda to get something if I'm good. Santa Claus kind of stuff that it's not out of guilt or restitution, that it just stands on its own legs. Other things that needed to be squared up have been squared up. This is separate. I'm not doing this work in order to pay something back because I still feel guilty that I wasn't who I should have been in the past. 
and that it is for my future and not from my past. So that was my little list of notoriety or, or, or highest timeline motives, highest timeline motives. So as I was writing the list and I was checking inside, I was like, ooh, there's a little bit in there. And you would say, I think for any human being on the planet, there's a little bit in there. <laughs> I don't think we could ever get away from a list like that and say, oh, yeah, no, that, mm -hmm. So as I felt, yes, there is some of that in there. And I started to identify which ones and what strength. It was small. It was faint. It was small, but it was there. So then I thought, okay, where do we go with that? And one of those is the awareness, just to be aware of it. Because as you are aware of it, then you can release it. If you resist it, try to bury it, try to stuff it, then it just keeps popping its head back up and it gets stronger. And then I just felt to release it outside of myself and what better place than to source, release it to God. It's almost kind of like, well, yeah, just to say release it to God and fill the void with God, fill the void with source. So as you clean out the drawer, then you can fill it back up, right? And then just to be trusting that all I need is provided and that I can extract it. And that led me to think of it, the book, the old book, Acres of Diamonds. That story from goodness sakes, the 1850s, 170 years ago now, man bought the land and thought that there was a little finger of diamonds there. And, uh, he dug and dug and hit a few, but not much, and finally went broke. And he had money invested from friends because he was so certain about it. He sold the property in bankruptcy, basically. And the people that bought it brought a surveyor in, and they knew the land well and knew exactly where to point to dig and hit the vein that the former owner had been looking for. And it was worth millions and millions of dollars. And that's, we often walk away too soon, you know, we're right there and we often walk away too soon. And then I just thought of this, and this is kind of a cool analogy that I really wanted to just be this vessel to allow spirit to flow through. And I thought of a garden hose. Isn't that just a great analogy? It's a vessel that if used properly, you might, like when I string mine to the garden back here, I can put it behind a tree so that it's not in the way and just leave it out there if I want to. And it does its purpose. It does its function. It doesn't get all puffy. And uh, when you need it, it dispenses the real stuff, which is the spirit, that we can be just channels to let spirit flow. And it comes through our own flavoring and seasoning and the way our way of being, but we are the channel, we're the vessel, and we mostly get out of the way and let the real stuff come through. And I just thought maybe that would be helpful tonight as we think about really playing the A game. Now, what I thought we would do here is just go back and look through these same slides from last week. This is exactly the same kind of thing that uh, we were talking about. So think about what you, if you were with us last week, think about what you created or what you would like to experience. And then what we're going to do is just review that for this week, because obviously from the post in Facebook, and those of you who are just on YouTube and not in Facebook, uh-oh, what happened? Sorry, guys. It just flashed, went green, and boom. Are we okay? Are we still on? Okay. I guess we're on. Let me know. I don't know what happened over here. Live television. 
Um, glitch in the matrix. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's one of those billion view keywords on TikTok now. Okay. All right. Good deal. I'm going to just mm, hands off. We'll, we'll keep our hands here. Um, but um, I got sidetracked. So we created a reality last week. Oh, and then that video that was in the uh, Facebook group. So basically what happened is on Thursday of this week, I woke up and was actually kind of nudged while I was still very groggy to check my bank account, which I never would do at that time of the day and don't do very often, but um, just uh, had a motivation to do it. And there was a very large deposit from Audible because in late July, some young lady from New Zealand, 26 year old young lady from New Zealand created a video about the book Parallel Universes of Self and sales of that book in August went through the roof. So we get royalties on that. And it was um, like something I was like, and the thing that I chided myself a little bit after was, oh, ye of little faith, because I had been envisioning that. I had said to Fred years ago, some years ago, I'd spoken it out. I said, we're going to be able to raise this to X kind of level. And this was even beyond that. So it was like, I should receive gratefully. And kind of funny because on Friday, the next day, two planets that tell that exact story were in an aspect with each other, Venus and Uranus. Venus is all about money and publishing and things like audiobooks. And Uranus is about sudden surprises. So there you go. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> there it was. So that was um, literally four days after we did this exercise last Sunday. And the podcast that I put on Subconscious Mind Mastery today, I played that, replayed that section from Addy from the seminar in Orlando, where, Orlan where uh, Arnaldo and I met, where she said that when she did the same process, that it was a matter of days that the changes started to be made in her home. So I just wanted to encourage us all that this is something that we can consistently keep in front of us. And Parallel Universes of Self was written in 2006. It was narrated in 2014. And it's like, you know, you move on, right? Well, this is something that these kids all over the world have revived and I want to be right in the middle of it. And we can really bring things in by doing this kind of incredible spiritual technique. So that's what we were doing last week is just reviewing the process. So the first step is to define a reality you would like to experience. So if you have in your mind something that you created last week, bring that forward. If you want to modify it or if you want to do something new. So we're going to just walk through it here. And then what I'd like to do is the same process for the collective. So as you're thinking about this thing from last week, then move forward and think about what you would like the collective to look like. What kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want your kids or grandkids to live in? And we'll do the process for that as well. Why not? That's really the gist of what we've been doing here. So that's step number one. And then step number two is that you get neutral. And we told this example, but it is such a good example. Let me just tell it again. That if you will think of a horizontal line in front of you, and in the middle of that horizontal line, put a zero point. And over here, let's go to desire. And let's say, you know, one to 10 scale, zero to 10 desire, zero to 10 over here, resistance, desire and resistance. So when anything comes up in your life, this is one of the best Fred Dodson exercises there is on the planet. I think it's I think it is his best that you run it through this little process in your mind and you can do it in seconds. 
is you think about how much am I desiring this thing right now? Whether it's a thing, a car, more money, a new job, whether it's a person, as in relationship, etc. What are you desiring and what level? 10. I got to have a new car. I got to have a new relationship. I don't want to be alone. Well, that's resisting. But I, you know, ah, I want that person would be better over here. And think about where you are and just get a mental number on the scale from zero to 10. And then think about the opposite. What are you resisting? Oh, I don't want to fix this old car again, you know, or, oh, I don't want to be single. Or I don't want to live in this place anymore. That's come up in the readings quite a bit. Several people want to move. I want to get out of here. You know, when I decided not to get out of Dallas, I got out of Dallas. <laughs> I'm telling you, because energetically, what happens when you desire something too much? You might as well put wings on it. And... What happens when you resist something too much? Bring it right in, right? Like a magnet. Boom. So it's a paradox. It's a universal energetic paradox. What we resist, we attract what we... Like fear. Fear is one of the most powerful resistances. Bring it right in. Anything you fear. Oh, I am so afraid of a billion dollars. Oh, a billion dollars. Oh, there's a billion dollars. Oh, I'm scared of it. Like a spider. Oh, a billion dollars. I don't want a billion dollars. Oh, get a billion dollars away from me. <laughs> but what we desire, it seems like it's always like the end of the rainbow, always over there. So that's the neutral process that is being discussed here in this third step is that you are releasing desire and resistance to more of a moderate, you know, one or two or maybe three, but no more than that. So that you can be okay with it, without it. You're just not tied to it. It doesn't consume you. It's just there. It's like you can create it, but you don't You don't own it. You don't have to have it. In fact, that's the, the last part of that viral video was that's what it was. Is when all of a sudden you don't need it is when it shows up. And then what you do is you look from the third person like you're looking into a window and you look at the new version of yourself, what does it look like? What, how does it act? How does it move? How do you move? How do you feel? What do you do during the day with this new thing in your life? And then you switch to the first person. You see it as though you are in that reality. So instead of just observing it, you become it. And then the last point is you just rest in the fulfillment. You live in the reality as though it was just there. And you just kind of forget about it. Go about your daily business. Go back to whatever you do and whatever you were doing and just kind of let the reality be that it is already there. And that's exactly what Addie described on the podcast this morning was that she created it while she was driving back and forth to her job in Houston traffic. So you do, you don't have to be sitting under a, you know, a tree meditating. You can do it anywhere. So, Let's go through this now, and then we're going to switch and do it for the collective. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put the slides back up. Let's go back through them again, and as we're doing each step, so just settle in. Oh, let me just caught up here, get caught up. Um, what happened? I uh, have to catch the replay on that because I've got it's quarter till, and I want to keep moving. It's in the Facebook group, actually, Pam. Yeah, it's in the Facebook group. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Wish I knew who that was. Thank you. 
Um, Oh, now, now you're going to get me crying here. <laughs> Brenda, thank you. That is beautiful. Rocking your granddaughter to sleep, telling her that we're living on our highest timeline. Wow. <laughs> that is so perfect. That is so great. I think this is Brittany. Brittany changed her thing. Is that you, Brittany? I think that is. Well, you can do it this week. All right. Um, let me go back. All right. Thanks, guys, for your comments. Um, oh, hey, Darren. Yeah, that is Brittany. Hi, Brittany. I'll have to remember the new uh, the new thing there. You're disguised in there. <laughs> Glad you're with us tonight. Good to see you back. So let's go back to the first step and just now we'll settle into this. And, you know, this doesn't have to be a real formal thing. I mean, just think of a reality that you'd like to experience. Think of something in person. Take a minute here to just really get it locked in. Now just release any attachments. In fact, he says here, come to the zero point, that middle point. So you really have no desire or resistance around it. You can be without it. You can be with it. If there is any resistance to this, then it would be best not to move forward. This is not a skip over. This is a, you have to go back and deal with why the desire or the resistance is still there. But if through a good deep breath, you can just release it, release it. Now, how would you see yourself if that was fulfilled? How would you move? How would you feel? How would you appear if there was a reality television camera filming you, filming your day? What show would that look like? Now, see it as you are living in that reality. That's one you can really expand out during the week, too. Like, make that something that you connect with and feel and sense and experience. Because then you're just resting in that it is fulfilled. You are shifting into that new reality.
Let's go back and do it again. Step one, for the collective, what kind of world would you like to have it be for yourself, for the rest of your years on the planet, for your grandkids or kids? What kind of place would you like this to turn into? If we're shifting, if things are changing, if we believe that, if timelines are separating, if things are happening, I know most of you believe they are. Well, paint your picture. I hope for everybody freedom is high on the list and integrity of governance is high on the list and abundance and peace. and respect both of each other and of this wonderful, beautiful planet that we live on. Those are some suggestions. You create yours. Boy, I'll tell you guys, this is where it gets good. This is where we can make a difference. Come to a point where you don't need it either way. If it continues even to deteriorate, don't resist it. It's hard to do. Don't resist it. Create and stand in your creation. Don't desire it too much either. Hmm, gets hard, doesn't it? I can feel attachment. No, but release it. Rest in the power of this technique. What about all the evil forces that are trying to control us? That's what Fred's book is about that I'm narrating. Well, they can't stand against love. That's why we need more of it. You know, if we had the amount of love going into the world, then all of that stuff would be so insignificant. So that's what we're standing for is an expansion of this throughout the collective. So now look around the world and just see what that would look like. What would that be like if that's how we were living? Boy, when you really immerse in it, it becomes a really beautiful world, doesn't it? You think of the potential of what it could be here. It could be amazing. Now, live in that world for just a minute. Think of your own little life, your own little milk run, where you go, where you work, what you do, where you play, where your friends are, entertainment. Think of all of that being in the vision of what you just created. Drive there. What does traffic look like in your new created world? What does government look like? What does school look like? What does work look like? What does politics and governance look like in your created world?
You already know what the next step is. Can we rest in the fulfillment when we read the news next? It takes all of these steps, and this is this is the one that seals it. So, look, if you get to this point, seriously, and you're having trouble resting in the fulfillment, like really, truly, and this is going to be hard, then just circle back, go back to the beginning, go through the steps again, and recreate and just keep working through the process. As you come back to this step, maybe you'll watch a little less news, or if you do, you'll be a little bit more cynical about it, and you'll just say, no, that's not real, <laughs> because I've created the reality, and that's what's going to happen, and you just have to catch up with it, and remember that realities can start shifting pretty fast. So if nothing else, your reality might shift right around what's going on. Like, as in, you don't have to live in that world. Let the timeline separate. And you go down your timeline and let the other one be its way. Now let's give each other some love. I saw this picture, and I think it was on one of our Facebook groups. Somebody commented on it, and I saw it, and they said, oh, that looks like Level Up. <laughs> This may not have been the exact picture, but I found this one and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. I think these are kids, though. But just envision, <laughs> there we are at the beach. I think our beach is sandier. This is a rocky beach. Our beach is sandier. The water's blue. The sun is setting. It's sepia, not black and white. But there we are. Don't you feel the love? Some of us have met. Some of us see each other on Facebook. Some of us talk on the phone, text back and forth. The friendships around here have become more than just an envisionment on Sunday nights. So picture ourselves there now, standing with these new realities that have just been created. And standing, supporting each other in love. and sending love to people whose names you've seen or those you know, sharing it around. And supporting each other, holding each other up, standing for each other's fulfillments, rejoicing when somebody's Reality shifts into a new area and something that they created fulfills. And then that circle tightens. And we literally just ascend our consciousness higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And we send it up through the clouds and that love that has been our common bond for the last two and plus years now radiates around the planet. And 
is felt. Send it out as though, think about this, send it out with the confidence, the crazy confidence that as everybody has been floating all these dates of mass destruction and big things happening and all this stuff that hasn't, is because there's this little group that's been getting together on Sunday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern and sending love and peace and intention out to the universe, and that it would have already blown up had we not been doing this. Be that crazy. It's kind of the Steve Jobs quote, right? Those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world will just do it. Well, we can shift consciousness. Let's just say we're doing that. Feel that powerful in this exercise. Now send the love out. Now send the intention out. Send the vibration from that perspective. And then just from also being the garden hose. Just a servant of the flow. Let's close with an ohm. How about that? Together. Oh. I'm just locking in that feeling of that common bond and that love and that shared space. And as we give each other a big hug energetically and say, so it is, I love you, namaste. Such a beautiful moment. And isn't it cool just to be a creator and just stand in that? and realize that we can call these things in. We've been given that power. Might as well use it. <laughs> We've got it. So, I'll look forward to some good posts in Facebook this week as things start shifting. <laughs> when you get a shift, put it in there, and we'll celebrate it together because that's all part of this. I looked over here. Esmon, was that you that put that circle in there? And and was that on just your personal page or was that on uh, the group page? Because I couldn't find it and I wanted to find that. That might have been you. Oh, oh. I want to put my finger on the pulse of spirituality and then market it really well. <laughs> Deliver it really well. I do. I do. I do. Um, well, thank you. We do need to remind, we're not going to do it every week. I promise that. That would get a little repetitious. Then it would be not, then it would defeat the purpose, but we will keep it fresh and we will keep it in front of us. That's for sure. I think Brittany might have left, but uh, great to have her with us again tonight. Liz says we need to go down there to her beach. Is it Sandy? That's We don't want Rocky Beach. We want a Sandy Beach. <laughs> I've never been to the North Carolina Outer Bank, so I um, uh, understand it's beautiful. Um, let's see. What do we got? Somebody said, hold on loosely. That sounds like Melissa. Melissa locked on to 38 special, man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I didn't catch who that was. Hmm. I wish I could. I wish I could. Liz, looks like we have some support for your suggestion here. <laughs> Good idea. Um, 
Yeah, it, Facebook zaps the comments. I wish I knew who put that picture up. But um, uh, anyway, ah, very sandy. Good. It's Esmon. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you. Good. Yes, Kristen, thank you. And um, we will all feel our highest timeline this week. Kristen keeps a great astrology conversation going in the Discord channel. If you'd like to ever join that, the link to it is right up at the top of the funastrology.com website. And it's an astrology conversation, but she is just like, she is loving it and doing a great job. And there are several hundred people in there that are chatting astrology together. So if you'd like to do that, uh, no, no skill level required. They will take you wherever you are. And some of it you might have to ask, now, what did that mean? But that's what it's there for. So just jump in. And there are a lot of people there to help. So, um, okay, great. Yeah, see, I don't see the names here on uh, StreamYard. So it helps there. That's great. That's awesome. All right, you guys. Uh, yeah, Kristen says, come talk astrology with us. Oh, yeah, and they're doing a book club tomorrow, too. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Darren, was good to see you. Thank you for popping back in. Appreciate it. Hope all is well in your area, Southern California. All right. Well, we are going to celebrate some fulfillments and some pops and some good things. And I just, I love saying that we are going to use our creative powers to literally create the kind of world that we want to live in. And so it's not only what we need or what we want, which is great. Use the technique for that or who we want to be. But then also let's use it collectively for the kind of world that we want this to become. And then just be crazy enough to believe that we can do it. That's a great thought. I love you guys. And, um, more than bananas. Well, I bought some new bananas this afternoon. No, I've got more than, but I've been eating really well. Um, I'll tell you what I'm eating. I will tell you what I'm eating. We, everybody that needs to fall off certainly can. Arnaldo, you have a wonderful week too, buddy. Thank you for being here again. Always love it. Always love it. No, um, when I was in Aspen, I um, somebody asked... There were several things that just popped when I was there to do some video production work again. And I didn't do it on any kind of level like I did before. I did it professionally for 20 years, but they, there were some people that needed some little stuff shot. And I kind of, it was like the swing or the pivot for me to get some camera gear back out and, and do some of that. And one of the people that wanted an interview shot with Dr. Joel Furman, if you guys know who I'm talking about. And he advocates um, a nutrient-dense diet, and it's really very simple. He calls it the G-bomb. Greens, beans, mushrooms, onions, seeds, and G-bombs. And that's what I, kind of my daily staple is a G-bomb salad. And that's um, what I've been doing. And the great thing about it is because it's so nutrient-dense that... Um, uh, you're not hungry that much. So uh, I had one meal today because I try to keep my voice clean until the middle of the afternoon and then I eat. Um, and I keep, uh, what I do is I saute up some onions and mushrooms and those go in a sealed thing in the fridge and have some beans that I just rotate around. And then I have the salad in a, you know, a Tupperware kind of thing. And takes about no time at all to put that together. And uh, that's what, how did you know I eat all those bananas? <laughs> but that's what I've been doing. And it has, it's been good. Yeah, it's been good. So um, I don't know who said, hold on loosely. Maybe they're still here. Admit it. <laughs> hold on loosely. That's uh, Melissa. Got bragging rights on that one when she just, she's like, oh, I got that. I, that's what I need to do. And she, uh, that's her, that's her theme song. And it pops up for her all the time. Melissa's got some power. She, her um, mom transitioned a couple of years ago, but she, one of their things was the color purple and purple light. So Melissa has lights kind of like these hanging in her school classroom and her mom will turn them purple. 
And the kids are like, oh, look, your mom's here. <laughs> so she's teaching, she's teaching the kids. Well, okay, it's not cooking. <laughs> it's not cooking. It's, um, I have, I got something that revolutionized. I mean, this is something really good for healthy eating. It's called the Ninja Speedy. You know, Ninja has this, like they've got a food eye and then, and they might pronounce it speed eye, but online it seems to be speedy, but it's S-P-E-E-D with an I. And it is this thing that cooks, steams, bakes, broils, does everything. And I'm able to put the onions and the mushrooms in there, a little bit of like coconut oil for the base and whatnot. I put some apple cider vinegar on top of it. And then you can set it, put the lid down, throw a little water in there for the steam and seven or eight minutes. And then I let them steam a little longer, scoop them out when they're cool, boom. So it really, for me, for, you know, just keep moving quite a bit that it's, um, makes it really easy. And then I've got all the components and I just pull everything out, make my little salad and uh, boom, there you go. Yeah. Oh, Melissa says <laughs> five times last week. That's funny. Yeah. The Ninja stuff is great. I have, I have their, um, I make my chai tea in their um, pressure cooker and that's perfect. So. All right, you guys. Wow. A lot of you hung around tonight. This is great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you know, we are on this journey and I mean, things are popping and the, the message of tonight is let's pop with them. Let's all get on this bandwagon and let's, let's keep the momentum going. I think things are moving in this positive direction. There are going to be bumps. We've got that Saigog one that we got to deal with, but uh, that's for the mundane. See, we're going to, we're going to create our own path through this. So if you've been struggling in those areas of, you know, feeling the economy and all that stuff, that's, this is the process. We're going to do it. We're going to keep creating through it. I have some things that I have to pull the loose ends together. I was going to try to do it so that it kind of announces around my birthday. So I've got three or four weeks to do it. I think I can, I think I can get it all pulled together, but it's going to be some additional material of support for us around these areas and it's going to be separate and I'll tell you about that toward the end of the month. It's something that I talked to Sarah about oh a month or so ago and she says I've been wanting you to do that for two or more years. <laughs> like so so we'll uh we're going to we're going to get that going. So um there we go. Walking each other home, we sure are. Um, oh, there's, oh, it's Kelly Bryson said, hold on loosely. Haha, <laughs> great. Awesome. What you do to get your name to show up here is on the post. Like if you go on the Facebook page now and, and here we are, right? There's the screen with level up. There's some text up above it. And in that text is a link that comes from this thing that, that I use to do these meetings so that we can have this little chat and this, all this cool stuff. It's called StreamYard. That's the platform that I'm using to put this out to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Facebook, and I won't go there. I'm going to be nice. I love Mark Zuckerberg. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I love Mark Zuckerberg. I love everything that Facebook does. I <laughs> they block it. They block your name. And you have to give StreamYard permission every time we do this to put your name up. But that's where like Kristen, when her name comes up like that, or like Melissa, they click on the link and that's what, um, and then I think you have to refresh your Facebook page and that's what allows the name to be seen. Why they do it, I don't know, but I didn't start the company, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea. It brought us all together. It gives us this platform. So we can't, can't argue with that. Yeah. It's just a week by week thing. And that should do it. That should let it pop. Thank you for being here. Good to see you in. Yeah. Really appreciate it. This has been fun tonight. You guys are still here. What's the deal? Don't you have to be somewhere tomorrow? <laughs> no, this has been great. I love it. So, um, 
Thank you guys. Have a wonderful week. And let's really, let's stand in this process, okay? Let's practice it, revive it every day. You don't have to repeat it. I mean, oh, there's something, something's loose. Okay, sorry. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, anyway, we'll let it be that that's our sign to go home. So um, we'll see you guys next week. And what a way to end with the OBS logo. <laughs> but we, you guys have a wonderful, amazing, incredible week. And I will see you guys next Sunday. And then Alyssa and Melissa will be doing it the week after that. And I'll see you on all the podcasts through the week and in the Facebook group. Take care. Thanks for being here tonight. Love you, everybody. Bye-bye.